I feel like over the last four or five years, before every TNA or Impact Wrestling pay-per-view that has taken place, I've got on here talking about the build and the lack of build. And what's been happening really, man, over the last couple years is that we're two weeks away from the pay-per-view. And you got to throw the entire card together on the uh, the re- remaining couple episodes. I was actually shocked that this past episode, I don't remember what match I was watching, where Tom Hannafin said Slam Reversary is two weeks from this Saturday. I was completely freaking baffled by that. Just straight up befumbled. And um, it just seems to be a consistent thing. Now, I, I do give them a little bit of a pass this time around. Because with this pay-per-view, you know you have people in the seats. Like, you know that there are people uh, excited for it. And the fans are excited for th- for those who can't attend. You know, those fans are excited to watch it on TV, pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it. Because we know we're going to see a record crowd. It's probably going to be very lively. And TNA fans thrive off that. We, for so many years, would watch these shows where the fans were sitting on their hands. And and they still do a lot of the time. But um, everyone, you know, really gets excited when you have that crowd who's just into it. And they're just engaged from the very beginning. And clearly, that's what they're banking on here. They know, and just for a lack of better phrasing, they know that no matter what card they put together for Slammiversary, people are coming. You know what I'm saying? Um, that doesn't mean that I feel like they're throwing shit together. That's not not what I'm getting at. I just mean I think internally they know people are showing up. So uh, the, the, the matches they put together, I mean, we've got four matches. So we've got half the card. They got to give us half the card still over the next couple weeks. And I can barely even guess what those matches would be. I have no clue what they're going to have Mike Santana do. You know what I'm saying? Just for just for an example. Uh, but I do feel that they've... Um, which I guess what I'm saying, what's very different is that with Slammiversary, that's usually the pay-per-view every year that we talk about, hey, this is the one they've gone all in on with the build and the card and you know, for the last several years, they were teasing who's going to show up. They don't do that anymore. But remember, you know, they who, who's going to show up? Who's coming that was fired from here? Or who's, you know, who's returning to the company? You know, they, they tease some shit, you know? And that's something that uh, has always worked with the TNA fan base. You know, we saw it at Hard to Kill. The TNA fan base responds to that, to who's going to show up, what's the surprise going to be, because they want to know, I shouldn't want to know. They want to feel like wrestlers want to be here. They want to be with TNA and that they want to feel like wrestlers are choosing TNA over other companies. So they much, they very much respond to this. But if we're talking about this card itself, and I'm going to repeat myself a little bit for those who consistently listen to me, but we're going to start with the world championship match here. And leading up to this, when I would do mailbag episodes or just live chats, whatever, I would always get, what do you think the build for, I mean, uh, excuse me, the main event for Slammiversary is going to be? And we would have fun th- figuring out, man, is it going to be Mike Santana? Is it going to be Joe Hendry? Is it going to be, you know, some people were even suggesting uh, Jeff Hardy could be in that position. Some people were suggesting it, it was John Alexander, you know? So it was fun to say, I don't know what they're going to do. And and there's so many possibilities and that leaves more possibilities for the TNA plus shows after and for bound for glory, but no, they're throwing everybody into one match. So we're going to see five of the top six guys lose at Slammiversary. And I don't care how you spin that shit. You lose a match, you lose momentum. So I was kind of expecting, okay, Moose is going to have this great one-on-one angle with someone you know, likely Joe Hendry, and then they're just going to move on to the next big angle. Like this is, this is the, the, the strongest, the main event scene has been in TNA in a really 
really long time because you're talking about we got the people in this match, Moose, Josh Alexander, Steve Macklin, Nick Nemeth, Frankie Kazarian, Joe Hendry. And, you know, you've got the plug-and-play guys, the Sammy Callahans, the the Eddie Edwards. And, um, you know, those are some of the usual suspects that we saw in these positions over the years. Um, but, you, you know, I'm, and I'm probably missing a couple names, but I would say this is the strongest it's ever been. So I'm looking forward to a really strong main event picture over the years. But now, I mean, over the year, the remainder of the year, but it's just, it just seems like, oh, well, we're, we're TNA. Our, our year ends after Bound for Glory. So we got to get all this shit in now. You know, so, man, it's a little thrown together for me. It's a little, let's get as many people as possible on the card for me you know i just don't like because it's a it's an elimination match so we're gonna see everybody lose this isn't like one fall to a finish we're gonna see everybody lose and it's crazy to think hey someone like steve macklin or frankie kazarian or josh alexander could be the first elimination of this thing so i'm not um i'm not overly excited about this because what was the build for this? The build was let's have a bunch of good matches. Let's have a bunch of wrestling matches, and those people are going to qualify for a big wrestling match. There's no heat here whatsoever, and Moose is a champion that you can build some heat with. This isn't like Josh Alexander where he was champion, and you would have to, to, to create some kind of phony heat like they did when Eddie Edwards was challenging him. Moose, Moose can be a heat magnet. But we're throwing everybody in there. Josh Alexander, I think, I know it's been a year since he relinquished the title. I still think he should be nowhere near the world title picture. I'm not saying he should wrestle in the mid card or the lower card for the X Division Championship. But I do think, after a very nice ha- program with Hammerstone, that he needs more of that. He needs more uh, you know, storyline-driven stuff to build him up. I don't think anyone's asking for Josh to be in the main event right now or to be the champion again. So use this opportunity to do something a little more creative with him. What happened to him being pissed off that Frankie Kazarian was going at his wife every every week when she was doing the ring announcing? What happened to that? I mean, I'm glad they pulled the pulled the uh, the ropes back a little because I'm kind of done with another Josh Alexander wife angle. But what happened to that? They've got a little something, you know, a little heat brewing between. Uh, Nick Nemeth and, excuse me, not Nick Nemeth, but Frankie Kazarian and Joe Hendry, you know? Um, Steve Macklin is, like, very much in this, like, tweener stage where no one even knows what the hell he's doing or what's going on with him. And Nick Nemeth, this, he's coming off, like, because um, he only shows up for one, one day of tapings. At, at least that's how it appears, if he shows up at all. This is just like, hey, he's our biggest name. Let's throw him in the match, you know? Um, I would have had more interest with the Nemeth brothers wrestling for the titles at Slammiversary, but they already did that. So we move on to the Knockouts Championship. I'm going to go a little long here, but I haven't given you guys much content lately. I've been talking about this one a lot. Oh, let me let me dial back real quick. Joe Hendry deserves a one-on-one match, and you're throwing him in to to be just another guy. That's a problem with this main event. Anyway, Knockouts Championship. I have repeated this many, many times, so I'm not going to like go too in-depth, but I'm going to bring you up to speed if you're listening to me speak about this for the first time. When Ash by Elegance signed with this company, I got on here and I said, this needs to be a home run for the Knockouts division. The Knockouts division from the top of the year has looked awful, and there's been no additions to the to the roster six seven months later none it's the same roster that we were like yo they need to fix this division here we are half a year later and that's longer it's longer than that in tna talk because they they punch out after bound for bound for glory they've gone the majority of their year and there's no change in the division there's no improvement in it whatsoever so i said Ash has to be a home run. She has to be. Not not like a, a, a fucking bunt, a single, double, not even a triple, a home run. This had to hit. And this has been the biggest bomb of a character 
where the fans like just do not fucking care. George the Iceman's doing a wonderful job. He's a little overbearing, which I think is killed the ability for the for Ash's actual character to get over. And I've said this many, many, many times. I like her. I am a fan of her. But if I'm being real, if I'm being a freaking realist here, the gimmick has completely bombed. There's been a lot of bad comedy. There's been some good comedy too. But there's been a lot of bad comedy. And the bad comedy was was kind of uh, it was kind of few and far between to when to start off. And then it has progressively gotten worse. And that happens in, in wrestling gimmicks all the time. You can, you know, uh, the best example I give for anyone who watched any AEW, think of Jake Hager's debut in AEW and what a badass they portrayed him to be the MMA, MMA fighter, the bodyguard. And it's like you forgot about his Jack Swagger shit. You're just like, well, this guy comes off like a badass. And he was a complete comedy character by the end. Every character in wrestling, I mean, I shouldn't say every character, but most heel characters in today's day and age seem to, um, no matter how serious they start off or or how, however their character starts off, it always seems to go into bad comedy when it's all said and done. Ash started going in there. Uh, going that way very very quickly now at nxt battleground she tried to get in if you know try to get involved in the match she's been sitting ringside for all these matches for year for, for all these uh t- knockouts title matches for the year but she hasn't really mixed it up with jordan grace this was her first time doing it jordan grace hits her with the belt lays her out the following weekend it's against all odds i believe ash attacks her from behind that lasts for about three seconds. Jordan Grace knocks her out. Um, I think they spilled the champagne in her eyes, and she rolls out, and she's doing bad comedy again, talking about I'm blind, and gets on Twitter, I'm going to sue Jordan Grace. That was a moment where you had your hottest crowd. Um, Jordan was red hot in the news. At that point, you have Ash lay her the fuck out. Put all that bad comedy aside. Lay her the hell out but no they went bad comedy one too many more weeks or one too one week too long i should say and then the next week ash gets her but who cares at this point and then ash is on tv and jordan is stuck trying to do this by herself no one has interest in it and the worst part about it is there is a chance that ash wins this thing that is the worst part about it but every day that passes i think there's a less probability of that happening. I think there's more of a probability of her character not lasting the year. Exhibition Championship. This is the one on paper everybody knows is going to be the match. Like we know that if anything is going to be a five star classic, whatever, we know that it's this one right here. This thing might even main event the show. I would, Mike Gilbert talks about this all the time. I would main event the show with this. I think it makes the most sense. And I think Mike Bailey's probably going to win the X Division Championship. Um, it sucks that they rushed him into a title run at one point because this would have been great if this was his first opportunity to to win. But we also don't know what his future is because there's some rumors about hey, he contract might be up, he might be looking at options. But right now, let's just assume Mike Bailey wins this thing, which I think is very very probable. Still, though, Mustafa Ali is carrying this this feud. So the World Championship match, there's no heat. Knockouts Championship, there's no heat. Exhibition Championship, there's really no heat because everyone likes Mustafa Ali. He's one of the best parts of the show. Now, his gimmick right now has a lot of legs. He could be Exhibition Champion for the rest of the year. You know, this is not dry. This is not stale at all. He could really, really um, keep going, and especially, especially because they added uh, campaign sync to this. Like it, it just has more legs. There's, there's more you can do with it. It just depends. Hey, how long is this guy going to be around? But if are we saying there's an like an excellent build going on here? There's a build. You know what the build was is that um, Trent Seven and Mike Bailey wrestle one on one. The winner was going on to face. Ali it against all odds. People were pretty certain Trent Seven was going to win so that they could push off the Mike Bailey match. And they were, they've been building uh, this for 
a couple months now. So I don't want to completely shit on it as far as them not building it because they are. It's been a predictable build, but it's a build, you know. Um, but is there is there any heat? No, there's not any heat. This is we're gonna watch one of the best X Division matches in the years. That's what we're expecting to see. And I don't think the average fan cares who wins, which is part of the problem. Now the the home fans there probably would like to see Mike Bailey win because the problem is they keep having Mustafa Ali wrestle in front of fan bases that are pro Ali. And they've been doing that almost since the beginning. So what benefits Mike Bailey is that the crowd is going to be behind him here. But I would say, does the average fan care who wins this match? I don't think so. So that's, that's where I'm saying, Hey, we're, we're, we are lacking a little bit of heat there. Storyline wise, not too bad, not too bad, but not, there, there's not heat it's if anything it's it's also comedy and then uh the tna digital championship the prestigious digital championship held by aj francis and he's taking on pco you're always going to get pco on a card you know what i mean especially for montreal here they said hey we got to get mike bailey and pco we got to get them title matches so we're going to have the uh, the toy title on the line. But what was the build here? There was the Steph Delander date angle and then AJ Francis and Rich Swan kind of like bumped into him backstage. I mean, it, it was something like that. I don't even remember. I just know they were like randomly walking around backstage and some shit happened. Then obviously they broke up the date, which was, I thought one of the worst angles they've done this year, that in ring date with commentary and entrances and Tom Hannafin calling it like a match. Uh, you know, AJ Francis come put Steph Delander through a table. Here's a problem. No one cares about Steph Delander. Again, where's the heat? Like, I think, I think the average fan really likes what AJ Francis is doing and w- what he's doing with Rich Swan. I think people do like that and they are entertained by it. But just like the exhibition championship, the heel is carrying this thing. They're carrying the, the angle. Steph Delander has not beat anybody. You could put her in the ring with Alicia Edwards. I think she's going to lose. She hasn't beat anybody this year. Okay. She got that number one contenders four, three, two, one match, whatever the hell. But she really hasn't beat anybody. She's wrestled Jordan Grace multiple times. She's lost. She wrestled Zaya Brookside and lost. I thought Zaya Brookside was like her buddy through this all of a sudden. What happened with that? But anyway, no one really cared when she went through a table. So where's the heat here as well? Now, this match is not going to be good. I can promise you it's not going to be good. But PCO is very, very over, and people are not turned off by AJ Francis by any stretch of the imagination. So um, I don't think it's going to be a bad match. I think there's a place for it on the card. I think we're going to be entertained enough with it. But then you look at the rest of this card, okay? Because we know we're going to get three, four matches. Maybe we don't get four because this main event has, is going to be so long. We get three more matches. I, I mean, I I can't even begin. Who the hell is the system defending their tag team titles versus? Is it going to be the Hardys? That's a possibility. What's Eric Young going to do? What's Mike Santana going to do? Please don't have him wrestle Dango. Uh, I do think that um, Joe Hendry and and uh, Moose are going to be the final two in this main event. I think Moose is going to win. I think Moose is going to wrestle Joe Hendry on Impact Plus. I think he's going to beat him there too. And I think Bound for Glory is going to be Mike Santana. I know everyone thinks it's it's Joe Hendry. One thing I've learned about this company is that they stick to the script and they don't they don't deviate. They they might make adjustments. They got to make adjustments or Joe Hendry's new popularity. But I don't think they deviate from who they say. Hey, we're building towards this. This person's going to be champion. This person's going to win the championship. I don't think they do that. But um, I, I'm trying to think who else on the card here. There, there's a few people on the card where you're like, hey, do you, they need a match. What are the knockouts tag team champions going to do? You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen with that. Is I mean, I guess they're going to wrestle Spitfire. That has been one of the worst storylines that they've got going on where they're wrestling each other and they're wrestling one-on-one matches and able to uh, 
you know, which is which they're going back to basics by wrestling singles matches, and that's going to get them to the promised land to win the knockouts tag team championships. I guess they're going to do that. It's probably going to be on the pre show because you got to think there's going to be a couple of pre show matches too. It just seems like they have to to squeeze a lot of shit into two episodes here coming up. And I hope that it comes off good. I'm not sure that it is. You know, we we hope that it's it's going to, but it just seems like they get so close to the pay-per-views every single month. And it's like, whoa, who's wrestling? When I was taking my kids to Rebellion, it was like two weeks before Rebellion. I was trying to run down the card for them. And there was like three matches. And and I was like, well, I, I don't know who's going to be there. You know, and that that's that's not okay. It just, um, it, it, it's, we just need more from that creatively. You know, when you, when you, as soon as a pay-per-view is over, you got to start building for that next one. Even if we don't know the build is happening, you got to start. And it doesn't come across like they're doing that. The only person that seems actively in a storyline at all times is AJ Francis. Everyone else is kind of like, I don't know what they're going to do or what they're doing. But I think they feel like they've got all their main people in one match and that's the build and that's what's supposed to sell the pay-per-view. I don't think people care that much. You feel me? So um that's all i got for you guys i hope that the day comes where i can i don't have to do these shows before a pay-per-view and say hey where's the build you know where's the heat because we're just we're just lacking it but we know slam anniversary is going to be good if there's any pay-per-view that delivers it's always slam anniversary always 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 <laughs>